The volcano, the biggest, fieriest fire in all the land. This intrepid hunk of molten rock is chock full of wonder and horrors alike. But many out there might not know where to begin, maybe too afraid to venture within, or heck, they might not even know where to find the frickin' thing. We do have a couple things going for us in that regard at least. The first being that our chances of locating the mountain rise substantially if we search the edge of our world, so it is advised to stick to the outside of your furthest islands while in search of the volcano. Secondly, it is always in the deep ocean, so if you're not battling the impending depths, then don't even waste your time. And even though I said a couple things, here's a third bit. Your camera will always pan up and out when you begin to enter into the presence of the volcano, so remain vigilant. Trek up the mountain to enter the volcano biome, a whole separate world in a sense similar to how the caves work in regular Don't Starve and Don't Starve Together. The biome is filled to the brim with exclusive structures, plants, mobs, and, well, Lava. But let's cover some of the basics first. Remember our friend, the old Coot Woodlegs? If you haven't already freed the pirate captain from his cage, you will be finding him atop the mountain here. And we will have to work towards securing his life, only to subject him to hell later. Learn more in his specific guide, however. The biome has some interesting impacts on the various spawning of some creatures, as you will not see crocodog waves when within this biome. So some preparation for these can kinda go out the window, only if you plan on staying long, however. But in the same vein, you can avoid any interaction with the seal NATO if you choose just by staying atop the volcano until hurricane season ends. Furthermore, birds and butterflies will dip out of the scene too, even if you have proper turf and or the collection of flowers needed. But bees can and will continue to pollinate and make honey, so maybe bringing some bee boxes up is not a half bad idea. But a little work in turf can really go a long way to making this a potential destination, especially because the puddles that will flood your islands during monsoon season won't even make a splash on the mountain. So it's best to think of the volcano as what you do the caves come summer and don't starve. Only choose to hide from water falling from the sky and not the heat burning everything away. But enough of that. What's new up above here? Well, there's elephant cactus, a plant that shoots spikes in your butt for 20 damage each if you get too close, and can be attacked actually by the player dealing 10 damage on top of that. If and when you destroy these cacti, you will be able to dig them up for replanting later, and can also receive a cactus spike for your trouble. Now I would recommend that after three cacti have been fallen, that you use these spikes to create cactus armor to further prevent any damage taken when harvesting these things, at least from afar. Prickly pine still hurt the spine, as they say. Now that you have some cacti, though, I'll save you the frustration of planting them. You need turf from the volcano or the magma turf off some islands in order to replant these things. So don't forget some when you're up there or around certain islands. And perhaps chop some of these ash trees, too, as ash itself is the only way to refertilize elephant cactus. So, yeah. These things do require some special care. Now that you have some, however, you can use them against some crocodog attacks as you would teeth traps against the hound waves. Perhaps turn the tedious task of farming butterflies into a pseudo-automated thing of ease, or perhaps use them to aid against the dragons of the volcano. The possibilities are kinda endless. Speaking of, though, dragoons. What's the poop with these things? Well, they're gonna roam about the volcano during the day, are hostile to pretty much everything, and thus will look to come a-charging right at you if you get too close. They do spawn from what are called dragoon dens, and these things can hold up to a max of four dragoon bros each, all of which are pumping iron ready to fight. Killing them is real easy, though as you can just avoid their charge, 
dodge their incoming punch, and then proceed to slap them across the face to put them in their place. Seriously, you can get like six hits in if you kite properly. Dragoons will always drop a piece of monster meat, but they have a 10% chance to drop a mighty useful dragoon heart. The heart itself has plenty going for it. It's a food item that heals for 11, fills you up for 25, but will knock you for 10 sanity each munch. Furthermore, eating one just makes you glow for over a minute itself, so that's lovely. One could also just leave one on the ground to ward off Charlie for a night if they're in desperate need. But most importantly, a heart is required for nearly every recipe within the Obsidian Workbench. I think you can see why potentially automating a heart farm is a grand idea. Here's the thing about the Workbench though, folks. It leads to a wonderful set of amazingly unique crafts but there are eight in total eight completely separate recipes that all need explanations and screen time on top of everything else we've already mentioned and the stuff to come yeah no the obsidian workbench will be its own separate video but for now let's just simply talk obsidian itself there are plenty of ways to obtain the crap, but these obsidian boulders within the volcano itself deserve our attention. If I can't even mine them, however, then how in the world am I going to obtain this obsidian we're talking about? But when in doubt, C4. Or in this case, a pile of three gunpowder. Using explosives is the only way to harvest these boulders, and you'll receive two to five obsidian each time. But don't worry though, as these boulders actually respawn. Oh, and you can also blow up Dragoon Dens too for four additional obsidian and a heart guaranteed. No worries again, however, as you yourself can actually craft additional Dragoon Dens. Quickly now though, these charcoal boulders can be mined and will provide two to five pieces of charcoal each along with the flint now and then. It's great for when you don't want to burn your forest down, but these guys do not respawn in comparison to obsidian boulders and they're not really that frequent. But before we get to the volcanic mechanic that everyone's likely waiting for, we must discuss the beauty of coffee plants. Don't be a fool and dig up withered ones though. Fertilize coffee plants with more ash in order to properly begin the replanting process. Like the elephant cacti that came before, coffee plants can only be initially planted on magma or volcanic turfs. And once you do and fertilize the suckers, you have access to a completely broken set of food items every four to five days. Place four harvested coffee beans or three beans with the honey within a crock pot to pour yourself a glass of joe. That when drunk increases your movement speed by 83% for a total of 4 minutes. And yes, that stacks with the walking cane. And yes, that translates the boats. Absolutely breathtaking. And in the words of Wilba, tis a zoom drink. But now... Eruptions. Come dry season, these will occur quite often as it'll only be 1.5 days between them with higher frequency towards the end of the season itself. You'll be warned via three tremors, but once the fire rains from above, it's time to focus. Dragoon eggs will crash all around you, destroying all structures, setting most anything ablaze, or producing towering waves of death and potentially even dealing 300 whopping damage to you if you get hit in the noggin. And oh yeah, did I even mention the ash that's gonna impede your view the whole time too? But after 30 seconds, the event will cease and you can either allow these eggs to hatch after 120 seconds or mine them to prevent any conflict. Sadly though, there will be no obsidian being obtained. Quick note though, it's possible you'll encounter a lava pool during this time and you can toss an ice in for a piece of obsidian if you wish. Made simple, when it comes to hot eruptions, 
it's just best to know and pick a spot for which you'll run to wait it out. Just keep away from base or other valuables and do not get hit by these eggs. It's pretty much a guaranteed death sentence, especially when out on the water. But what if we could just prevent them from falling in the first place? Enter the altar of sacrifice. The lady of the mountain lies dormant outside of dry season, but she'll certainly give us fair warning about our impending doom. Those lava cracks you see will tell you how close the next eruption is. The higher means it's closer, but I'm gonna make this as simple as possible. You can appease her or instill her wrath quicker through a magnitude of items seen here. Think of it this way. Every 16 points of positive appeasement means a delayed eruption of two days, while 16 negative points means a premature eruption beginning one whole day sooner. You can delay it up to four days or practically make her explode right then and there. And as much fun as the latter sounds, it may not be the best idea now. Believe it or not, your best bet lies with doy doys, as a single feather means two full days of delay. And yes, Yes, people, I know about the mechanic of bringing one or two doy doys from your flock into the volcano to force the game into thinking only one to two remain, thus spawning a guaranteed crappus for highly efficient crappus farming upon a doy doy's death. Thanks for reminding me of this forgotten tip seven million times, even though it was always the plan to go over it eventually. Oh, and did I mention that it's probably not a good idea to just stick around the bloody ocean of lava at the center of the biome, you numpties, because you're just gonna burn your bits off in an instant. But there you have it, everyone. A guide on the mountain of fire, dragoons, and snacks, apparently, and how we can turn its horrors into wonders. Eruptions are a devastating thing, but hopefully now you know how to go about saving yourself from the heat of the moment. Thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.